Good morning, great tens, and welcome to my lesson on Finders Keepers, lesson seven, and I'm going to be reading chapter six to you. Um, I spoke to a great ten the other day who says that she uses her, her English lesson almost as a bedtime story. She doesn't do much except obviously the questions and the answers, but the actual reading of the story, when she gets into bed at night, she takes her book and she puts her phone on and she listens to me reading the story. And then when the chapter is finished, she can read her Bible and then go to sleep. So if you want to do it like that, that's one way. As long as you make sure you don't fall asleep when I'm reading to you, hey? Mm, great tens, please don't do that. I know that these lessons are boring. And there's nothing else I can do about it. Sometimes I feel they're about as boring as me watching this wall. Imagine what it's like for me. I have to teach this wall. At least you guys are like doing the work and doing the things. I just want to see your faces. I don't want to see this boring wall. Sometimes I want to take these two cords and put them together that it can be different. Sometimes I want to separate them. These are the only things I teach is... A little white cord and a little black cord and then a blank cord. It's horrible. I can't wait to see you. All right, grade tens. I said that we're going to be doing lesson uh, chapter six, lesson seven. But before we do, I first want to show you in chapter five we studied hor we we heard about horoscopes. And um, for those of you that weren't quite sure what a horoscope is, you'll now understand what it is. As soon as I show you this from the U magazine, it's the studying of when you were born. And then it tells you a little bit more. And over here will be the names of famous people. And we know that Lefuno says that they got to know their soapies, stars, generations, and Siemens Delon when those characters were born. And if you look at today, it says the 21st of May um, until the 20th of June, and then you are a Gemini. And the Gemini means twins. And there are people who believe in the horoscopes, and that's fine. And if you read it, it's got information like let your dreams guide you to doing fun things the sun moves into your sign so it's time to celebrate your birthday and start a new personal year it's a great week in which to put on your thinking cap and make plans for the year ahead so people live their lives depending on when they're when they're born i am a pisces i'm down here so it says that um you know, I can look at what my, my stars are for the week. There are lucky numbers that I could base my life on. And this is what horoscopes are. And we know that the two girls, Dudu and Lufuno, are not allowed to read the horoscopes. Um, many parents think that they're not for, not for children. But they do anyway. And they then also make movie nights. And they are... They pretend that they're film stars and that they're the directors of a show. But, great tens, having said that to you, it is in chapter 6 of the novel that we now move from something that is very familiar, something that we've been reading about the whole time now. We have seen Lufuno telling the story from her point of view, okay, as a first person, narrator which she was saying I and me and mine and now great tens we move to a third person narration and it is the third person narration that we see and we see it from Mandla's point of view guys I'm sorry if I'm really not good with these video things I'm sorry if the if the camera works bad and I don't seem to be getting any better, hey? You'd think practice makes perfect, but do no need me. But I am trying. Okay, so now chapter six. We've had first-person narration the whole time. We've read the story from Lufuno's point of view. Now we move to Mandla's point of view. But he doesn't speak about me or I or mine. Somebody else tells the story, so it's a lot of he and his Third person would be she, her, or he, his. So be aware of that change in the novel. 
Okay, and I'm now going to read chapter 6 to you. So please follow carefully so that I can read it to you and then we can look at the questions and the answers. I'm starting with chapter 6. Amanda turns the bead bracelet over and studies it. He will give it back to the new girl the next day. It will give him a chance to talk to her again. And he wants to. He doesn't quite know why he kept her bracelet. There was something different about the girl. Something in her eyes. Secrets. Sadness. He smiles, remembering her face as he closes his fingers around the bracelet. It has brought him luck in the match today. That's for sure. His father had watched the game. He was visiting from the Eastern Cape. So here now we're going to move along or move on to the first time that we actually get to speak about the Eastern Cape. Oh, all these things are falling all over the place. Okay, so this is the first time that we're going to read now about the Eastern Cape. And we hear that Mandla's father has come in, come to Cape Town, come in. I don't know what that word means. Okay. The first time that we're now reading about the Eastern Cape and we now read that Mandla's father actually has come in from the Eastern Cape and is now there to visit Mandla. Okay, I'm going to try and get settled now. Yeah, we go. Let's try again. Okay. Um, his father had watched the game. He was visiting from the Eastern Cape and Mandla had seen him arrive as they were warming up. His father had waved, but he'd pretended not to see him. Great turns, do you think Mandla's got a bit of an attitude here with his dad, eh? Let's see if we can find out why. The other team was strong, but they were stronger. And even though he was at midfield, he had scored the winning goal just before the end of the match. His teammates shouted jubilantly, very happily, punching the air and giving him high fives. They were victorious. He felt that rush of happiness, of raised spirits, of elation, but only for a moment. It drained away when he saw his father striding towards him across the pitch. Hello, Mandla. It's been a long time. Well done, my boy, his father said, slapping him hard on the back. It was as if he was punishing and congratulating him at the same time. Mandla nodded and looked down uncomfortably. Um, thank you, Tata, but I'll see you later. Back in the change rooms, the others crowded around him. Are you coming to celebrate? Just one hour, Mandla. We're going to Cicelo's house. Huh? Mandla has to go with his father. He's visiting from the Eastern Cape. Did you see him? He's a chief in his village. Did you know? What? Mandla's father's a chief? Does that mean you can have lots of wives, Mandla? And the boys all laugh. Obviously, these are his two teammates talking, hey? And then when they hear that his father's a chief, somebody says, Oh, so you're going to have lots of wives? And all the boys laugh. Okay, I'll come and join you guys for a while, but I can't stay long, eh? Cecilia's lounge was crowded. He didn't want to be there. He felt dirty and sweaty and everyone was talking too loudly, so he had a Coke and then he left. Now he is sitting in his bedroom trying to concentrate on his homework, but the bright beads keep distracting him. Lufuno. That is her name. Hmm. It's a beautiful, gentle name. The sound is smooth as the beads that he rolls between his fingers. There's a knock on the door. His aunt's face appears. Manla. Can you join us in the lounge? The supper is nearly ready. And your father tells me we are celebrating a victory. Mandler reluctantly makes his way to the lounge. So he's reluctant. He doesn't really want to do this. Mandler reluctantly makes his way to the lounge. His father has a beer in his hand and his feet up. He looks relaxed. The alcohol... Gosh, I'm reading to you and using this little pencil and everything. In the meantime, you can't say a thing because the camera work's not good. Okay. Mandla reluctantly makes his way to the lounge. His father has beer in his hand and his feet are up. He looks relaxed. The alcohol has changed his mood. And he's almost jovial and funny and good-humoured as he pats the sofa next to him, inviting Mandla to sit down. His aunt is cooking in the kitchen and the clanging sound of pots and pans compete with the noise of the TV. Mandla sits down next to his father. He is always amazed that, although his father is not a big man, he has a large presence. Everyone is always rushing to serve him, laughing at his jokes, frowning when he frowns. 
His aunt's house has been full of relatives all day, coming and going to greet his father, the chief, the leader, a wise man to be followed and respected by everyone except Mandla. Why? What's going on? We need to find out what is it between Mandla and his father. Why is Mandla so rude? And why does Mandla have this attitude towards his father? Eventually, supper is served and they gather around the table and say grace. And before his aunt dishes out the chicken and rice. She does it like no one else, his father says. The chicken is more succulent, juicy and moist. And the potatoes are creamier. And the spinach is just right. Mandla can't help but think of his mother's chicken, of how it is never quite good enough for his father, always slightly overcooked or undercooked. He sighs, wishing she had accompanied his father on this trip. So now we do hear a little bit about his mother here, and Mandla says he wishes that his mother had come with the father, with his father. After supper, when the dishes have been cleared and coffee served, the talk turns to the strike at the On The Rise bakery, where his aunt works. Who else works there? Yes, of course. Lefuno's mother and father also work at On The Rise bakery. But Mandla's aunt is a receptionist in the factory office. So obviously she will work then under a different union to the workers that are on the, the shop floor, on the, on the floor in the bakery. Um, his aunt is a receptionist at the factory. His uncle, though, is involved in the union that is controlling the strike. I'm afraid it's going to get ugly, his aunt says. Management just won't budge. They won't move. So they're not prepared to give more money than what they've offered. And the unions want more money before they, they stop the strike. And then, says Mandla's father, there are those who betray the others who are striking, his father says, accepting another cup of coffee from his sister. That has to stop. Now we know that Lefuno's mother and father are not members of the union and they're not striking, are they? That has to stop, says Mandela's father. It was like in the fight against apartheid. We have to stay united. There is a murmur of agreement amongst the older members of the family. Mandla downs his coffee quickly, then thanks his aunt for supper, excuses himself and goes to his room. He doesn't want to sit and listen to his father. Later, his aunt comes and knocks softly at the door. Can I come in? Of course, he says quickly. Your mother has, your father, your father has gone out with the men, she says. Mandla does not answer. Mandla, you've got to stop Blaming him for what happened last year. She continues, it is not his fault. So something happened. And Manda is very, very upset about whatever happened. And he blames his father for this. And now the aunt says, stop doing it. It wasn't his fault. I'm not the only one who's angry, Manda says. Do you think Mama doesn't blame him too? He knows he shouldn't be so defensive, but his aunt is not to blame for his father's mistakes. His aunt starts saying something, and then she stops. Your mother will soon see reason, he, she says, and look how your father treats you. He loves you, Mandla. Huh, because I'm his only son, Mandla says. That is the only reason. Well, isn't that reason enough, asks his aunt. Then she leaves him and he sits at his desk pretending to do his work. The muffled sounds of his cousin's PlayStation coming through the bedroom wall. Later he goes to the lounge to say goodnight to his aunt. She's good to him. He should not be rude to her. Everything is clean and in its place. The women have done their work. The women have done their work? The women have done their work? The women have done... Their work? Mm, great times. Really? So because women are women, it's their work to clean up the house. So maybe here, girls, you know, a little bit offended 
we should mean a lot more to society than just people that can clean our house and make sure that everything has its place um, and that the house is clean. But maybe we need to look here for the first time at when you do your questions, that little last the block, the, the columns at the bottom with themes. Yeah, we have maybe a theme that we need to concentrate on that looks at Western nice culture versus traditional culture where in many traditional cultures the women doing the cleaning of the house is a tradition and a cultural um expectant expectancy that everybody thinks is the right thing all right on tv it is the late night news and a clip about the strike his aunt I know Bongani is part of the union, but really, I think some of these people just want to, don't want to work. He smiles. You didn't tell Bongani that. His aunt snorts. Talk politics with your uncle Bongani. <laughs> I'll be up all night. But is it safe for you, auntie? Do the strikes n n strikers know that you're not on the floor? I'm fine, Mandla. Don't you worry, she says. They know who I am, and they know that your uncle. Bon you, they know who your uncle Bongani is. So obviously, Bongani is his aunt's husband. Hey, besides, all of this will be over soon. Now you go to bed. It's late. He says good night and gives her a quick hug. In his room, he hesitates before setting his alarm on his phone. Nandi's face looks up at him from the screen. Nandi. Who is Nandi? We're hearing about her for the first time. Nandi's face looks up at him from the screen. Such a sweet smile. Really, Mandla? Nandi has a sweet smile? But you are holding on to Lufuno's bracelet? What gives, boy? But he can't think of her now. He must change that screensaver soon, he thinks. Soon, but not yet. He sets his alarm and puts the cell phone on his bedside table. Then he reaches for the bracelet. Really, boy? You're reaching for the bracelet when you've just seen Nandi on your phone? Huh? Mandla. Then he reaches for the bracelet. He picks it up and holds it to the light. The bright colours shine. He can't wait to see the expression on Lufuno's face when he returns it. Thank you, Lufuno, he says. You did bring me luck in the game. The next morning... His cousin wakes him before his alarm. My uncle told me to give you a message. You must help him this afternoon to sort out a storeroom at, that Aunt Andisisue is using. But I have soccer practice, he protests. He sits up in bed. Coach will be furious if I miss today, especially because of the game on Saturday. His cousin shrugs. Your father will be furious if you don't help, he says. I can help Aunt Andisiwe another time. Manda stands up suddenly. Oh, and his cousin jumps in fright at this angry way of standing. He stands. He's doing this to punish me. Uh, don't shoot the messenger, his cousin says nervously. Now we know that means don't be horrible to the person who's just passing on the messenger, okay? The message. So he says, don't shoot the messenger. I know it's not you, Manda says. Where's my father? He's gone out already. I don't know where, his cousin responds. But you wouldn't disobey him, would you? They both know the answer. This afternoon, Manda will not be at soccer practice. He grabs his bag and heads for the door. How could his father manage to ruin the one thing in his life that gives him pleasure? All right, that then is the end of chapter six of Founders Keepers. And I have already sent to you the questions. So I referred just now to this last question, the column at the bottom about the theme. And you might want to say something here about cultural beliefs versus westernization, where many cultures believe that women are there just to do housework and to be responsible for that which happens in the home and the family and um, I know that that modern westernized women really don't feel that way we've read something about the strike 
we know something more about the family. We've met his father now and we've his aunt. Um, you might want to say something about stereotyping that is definitely linked to cultural beliefs. The stereotyping that women should be in the in the kitchen and cleaning the house and looking after the babies. So you would say cultural beliefs versus westernization as well as then the stereotyping. Um, and you definitely heard more about the strike. All right. Again, I'd like to ask you to please use the mark allocation as a guide to the length of your answer. And again, question four asks about two figures of speech. Concentrate on these figures of speech, please, so that you answer these questions nicely. And then um, make an effort with what, question six, what does Mandla learn about the strike from his elders after supper that night? It's worth four marks, so you're going to have to dig quite deeply there for me, please. All right? And that then, grade Tens brings us to the end of today's lesson. I sincerely hope that you are keeping up with all your schoolwork and that you're doing what is expected of you and that you are remembering at all times to be polite and to appreciate the people who love you. I just want to tell you that if you are feeling a little bit down and if you're feeling a little bit annoyed maybe a bit aggressive and grumpy and if you just wish this whole thing would end then I want you to know that you're definitely not alone because that's exactly how I feel I'm grumpy with the dogs and they don't deserve it because look how lovely he is he sits here and listens to all our lessons every single time I'm lying he sleeps all right, great tens. Don't feel that you're alone. You're not. It's it's the it's just the effect that that lockdown will have on you. But I know that we're going to meet again. I don't know where and I don't know when, but I know we'll meet again some sunny day. So from me, good morning and thank you, great tens. The boys can go and the girls can follow. Oh, look what I did there. Ha. Huh. Love you lots. Speak to you soon. Thank you.